This video may contain some mild gameplay spoilers. Enter at your own peril. The freedom to do absolutely everything you would want with the game world. That's what Breath of the Wild set out to do. It was a magnificent game where truly everything you could find had purpose, for better or worse. Some loved it, some hated it, and everyone thought the weapon system and enemy variety could do with a little bit of touching up. With Nintendo being so silent on Tears of the Kingdom, we've had no idea what this could bring. Now, Tears of the Kingdom is out and available for purchase at your local absolutely everywhere, but perhaps you might be wary as you know absolutely nothing about the game so far. I'm here to help you with that, in a mostly spoiler-free way. This is going to be extremely difficult for me. Tears of the Kingdom opens up very differently from how Breath of the Wild did it. No longer are you playing an amnesiac Link, well, I mean, a little bit still, but you are now a fully powered Link, complete with two lines of health and a maxed out stamina gauge. And you explore what appears to be a rather ancient cave together with Zelda. Some totally spoiler related stuff gets said, and Link not only loses his power, but also gets his arm decayed and the Master Sword broken. Zelda disappears, and the next thing you know, you wake up in Skyward Sword. Now equipped with a new arm and a lot of bad juice in your body that keeps your real strength at bay, you must set out on another journey through a Hyrule that's growing once again. But first you're kinda stuck in the sky for a bit. The Sky Island serves as this game's great plateau, and if you've played Breath of the Wild before, you'll know what to expect here. This is where you get your Sheikah Slate powers that are no longer Sheikah Slate powers, this time tied to your newfound arm. Out are the old abilities of Magnesis, Stasis, Explosives and Cryonis, and in are the new abilities of Fuse, Recall, Ultra Hand and Ascend. Aside from Ultra Hand, these new powers are entirely new and serve as a great way to put things into a new perspective. Whereas Ultra Hand is mostly a powered up Magnesis, now able to grab most items, rather than just magnetic ones, and glue them together, which is the most powerful tool in the game. You also now carry a third upgradable stat, which is effectively your battery. You can use this to power mechanical objects that you can also glue to your structures, giving you the ability to construct actual vehicles. Luckily, this battery recharges over time, so you don't really have to worry about it too much. Recall is your new time-based power, allowing you to rewind an object's time to an earlier state. While this is happening, you can be moving around and thus be riding a rock that's lifting up into the sky, for example, as rocks will just occasionally fall down. You can also use this to catch items from falling off a cliff if you're fast enough. Entering recall selection nearly freezes time to a halt for you to select what you're recalling, giving you ample time to catch things. Fuse is a great many things. It allows you to construct new weapon types like bludgeoning hammers with boulders. It allows new interactions on things like shields and it facilitates arrow differences. No longer are there fire arrows, ice arrows, shock arrows to collect. Or, at the very least, I haven't found any yet. Instead, any item you can carry with you is now able to be attached to an arrow, which lets fire berries, for example, create fire arrows. Bombs are now in limited supply as they are attached to bomb flowers, and as such, that is how you will create bomb arrows this time around. When used with weapons, fusing also increases durability and weapon strength by a little bit, making the weapon breaking issues slightly less. The Ultra Hand is obviously the star of the show here and will most likely be your cornerstone in everything, from grabbing and moving stuff to constructing bridges, vehicles and even a ladder to heaven itself. This is truly the power to create everything your imagination desires and have it be functional in some way or another, whether it is through clever combining of your powers or simply being a master of Minecraft. And Ascend lets you go through something that is above you, it's really not that complicated. Breath of the Wild's Hyrule is once again the stage of this new game, but don't let that fool you. Maybe it's because I've deliberately tried to stay away from Hyrule in the weeks leading up to the game? But the Hyrule we see here, while similar, manages to set itself apart. It sounds odd to say, but the more you find it's the same, the more you find it's not. Loads of areas will have new things sprinkled in while others look exactly the same, giving new players a whole new world to explore while returning players will be left wondering what they could find in that one location they remember. Tears of the Kingdom canonizes almost everything Link could do in Breath of the Wild, so Terrytown is back as are the other villages and towns that were there in Breath of the Wild, with a new inclusion of the newly forming Castletown, which is, as of now, more of a center of operations rather than a functioning society. All over the place, you'll find little traces of Hyrule being rebuilt as well, with bridges that were once out having been brought back to life, sometimes a little shoddily, and a lot of construction materials are just lying around, wink wink, nudge nudge. 
Gone is the abundance of Sheikah technology across the land, having apparently gone back to their dormant state. But not to worry, as Zonai technology has risen and is once again entirely new to everyone except maybe the player. And is the reason for many mechanical objects being usable, such as fans and the new glider, which is a completely separate thing from the paraglider that you also get. You can even collect these in capsules in certain places, letting you construct things with them on the fly. Zonai shrines also replace Sheikah shrines, with them effectively being the same thing. The four other races of Hyrule also return, with each of them currently undergoing a major crisis as you would expect. These parts have some story stuff in them, so I can't quite show them off. The story of Tears of the Kingdom, unlike Breath of the Wild, is one that happens in the now more so than the past. It is no longer just a story about what happened, but rather one that's about what's happening right now, what happened in the past, and how this relates to what happens in the future. The grander narrative still largely operates outside of Link's vision, with him more or less being the thing that enables others to do their part, which is kind of par for the course for the Zelda series. For enemy variety, you'll find that it is greatly expanded, both in weapon usage and in variety in general. There are more types of enemies in Tears of the Kingdom, and the bosses are much more unique to each other than the Blights could ever hope to be. And that is all I will say on this matter, please find the rest out for yourself. Tears of the Kingdom is an odd sequel to a Zelda game. On one hand, the Hyrule we visit isn't exactly a new one. Yet on the other hand, it changes enough for it to be an entirely new experience. As someone who was honestly quite worried about the lack of information, I do still think it was probably not the best move for marketing to be so secretive about the game for so, so long. And yet, on the other hand, maybe that was for the best. I don't know. All I know is that I still have so, so much more to discover in this game. It may not be the open world game changer that Breath of the Wild was at the time, but it didn't really need to be. It just needed to be a great game, and Tears of the Kingdom delivers on that in spades. If you enjoyed this video, leave a comment and maybe a little thumbs up, and you might be interested in subscribing. I plan to release some more Tears of the Kingdom content over the course of the next few weeks, going into some details on things you can do, things you can find, and even building techniques I've found so far. If you're still uncertain whether or not the game is for you, you could always hop into one of my live streams over on Twitch, where I'll probably be live playing the game a lot. I also play Mario Kart and Smash Bros from time to time, so feel free to check it out. Link will be down in the description below. Whatever you decide to do, this has been Eon Aegis signing off, and I hope you are having a wonderful day.